two, one. For our conspiracy test, we detonated this two-ton truck bomb to recreate the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing. Was the actual bomb powerful enough to bring down the Murrah building as the government claims? Or were there additional terrorists with multiple bombs, as some conspiracy theorists claim? Earthquake monitors from the 1995 bombing seem to bolster the conspiracy theory. They clearly show two ground shakings in the attack, but does this represent two bombs? To find out, we commissioned the Iris Pascal Research Center to record a seismogram of our explosion. How will it compare to the 1995 seismogram? Can one explosion shake the ground twice? Here, if we compare the actual data and the data from Oklahoma, you can distinctly see two distinct shakings of the needle, if you like, one and two. In the New Mexico Tech reenactment, you can also see two distinct arrivals, one and two. This is occurring because the energy is traveling by two different paths through the Earth, and they arrive at different times. This irrefutably shows that, indeed, the Oklahoma City bombing was due to a single bomb. Even though the seismic data seems to support a single truck bomb theory, it doesn't directly answer the debate of how forcefully McVeigh's truck bomb impacted the Murrah building. The FEMA report and General Parton's report calculated this force, but arrived at vastly different pressures. To help determine whose calculations were right, we directly measured the pressure from our truck bomb explosion. But the blast was so powerful, it wiped the data off the computer. Now, we'll explode a second multi-ton bomb, but this time, there will be three changes. First, our truck was consumed in the initial test, so this will be an open-air test. Experts agree that with an explosion this big, it makes virtually no difference whether the thin truck body is here or not. You hand, you cut, I'll pour. Second, we're going to recreate the bomb exactly as General Parton and FEMA envision it. For the most accurate test of their calculations, the barrels will be closely packed, not arranged in a T, as McVeigh claimed. The third change is to protect our recording equipment from the blast. It'll be with us in the underground bunker. If everything works correctly, you should be able to see a pressure wave appear on the scope here when it uh, goes off. I'll put my money on General Parton. He, he was the head of explosive research development for the Air Force. He's a very honest man. If the pressures that you measure are similar to what we calculated, it would help to confirm that the calculations we did were representative of what happened uh, at Oklahoma City. Clear to fire. Clear to fire. Here we go. Five, four. Three, two, one. This time the recording equipment works perfectly. Our data clearly shows that the column was loaded with over 5,500 pounds per square inch. This data proves that FEMA got it right and General Parton got it wrong, beyond a shadow of a doubt. But for General Parton, the force of the explosion still doesn't explain the non-symmetrical damage to the Murrah building. Increased pressure does not account for the asymmetry. To investigate General Parton's question of why a column further from the truck bomb was destroyed, while similar columns closer to the bomb survived, we commissioned a computer simulation. This sophisticated computer program is used by the military to analyze blast effects on buildings. We enter structural details of the Murrah and the pressure data from our truck bomb test. It calculates that the three internal columns are all broken. How does this compare to FEMA's real-world observations? Investigation showed that all three of them were badly damaged and on the verge of collapse, 
The reason one did and the others didn't was somewhat a matter of chance, but also the ones that did not come down were closer to the stairwells and elevator cores, which provide a lot of additional support. General Parton remains unconvinced. You can rationalize anything you want to. A memorial park now stands where 168 lives were extinguished. Its grandness only hints at the magnitude of suffering. George Howard was a veterinarian. Donald Earl Burns, one of my best friends. Now there's Dave Burkett. For survivors like B.Z. Lawton, the mystery of how many bombs destroyed the Murrah building is just one chapter in his tome of questions. When I talk about what these guys did to 168 people here, 58 of them are friends of mine, I get very angry. And those 58 friends of mine aren't here to, to fight, for them, some, uh, fight for themselves now. And I want to continue pursuing this until my dying day. Timothy McVeigh was executed for his role in this horrendous crime in 2001. Terry Nichols is sentenced to life in prison. Our conspiracy tests show that the official story of their attack is plausible. Yet some details of their crime are still unknown. And for many, the mystery remains. <laughs>